This is the plaintiff, Lynn Larkin. She says she purchased a Mercedes from her neighbor, and they agreed that once the car was checked out, they would agree on a price depending on the repairs it needed. When the car came out of the shop, the mechanic handed her a bill for over $1,500, and the defendant told her he would give her only 250 bucks to cover the repairs. Huh? Is he kidding? She's suing for $1,291.50, the full amount of the repairs. This is the defendant, Jay Grutman. He says he sold his neighbor his mother-in-law's Mercedes, and then a few weeks later, she presents him with a repair bill, of all things. She says the car needed. He did agree to give her 250 bucks to be neighborly, but over $1,500? No way. He's accused of flaking out on a Mercedes. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says her neighbor, the defendant, ripped her off on a Mercedes that he sold her. She's not going to take it lying down. But the defendant says she knew what she was getting into because it was a very, very old car. It's the case of a bad case. I think it's happened sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Ms. Larkin, so you yes, and Mr. Grutman are neighbors? Yes, we live in the same condo building. Okay. So, Mr. Grutman, at some point in time, you had a car that you were selling, correct? Uh, correct, Your Honor. And what is the car? What kind of car was it? It was a 1997 E320 Mercedes. And I what agreement do car... you arrive at for the price? I told Ms. Larkin that the car would be $3,000, which was less than what the book value was. and that What I, was the book was, value? It, I believe the book value was around $3,400. And I asked Ms. Larkin to please make sure she has her own um, mechanic look at the car because it had no warranties of any type, which she agreed to do and which she did drive the car to her mechanic with me um, in the neighboring town. The mechanic looked at the vehicle, drove the vehicle, put the vehicle on his lift, inspected the vehicle for nearly 40 minutes, came back into his office, told Ms. Larkin that he inspected the exhaust system, the tires, other components, front end, and that there were no um, uh, uh, rust areas, leakage, um, and that the car, in his estimation, only needed an alignment because uh, when it exceeded 65 miles an hour, when he was driving it, there was a shimmy in the steering wheel, and that it needed either a window switch, an electric window switch, or a motor in the rear passenger area of the car. Okay. So what do you and Ms. Yes. Larkin uh, decide that you're going to do about that? When Ms. Larkin drove the car back to our respective residence, she asked me if I could do better on the price, which I said yes. I'm happy to reduce the price by an additional $300, bringing the car to $2,700. Ms. Larkin agreed that that was fair, gave me a $500 deposit, which was on April 2nd of 2020, and asked if I, she could pay the $2,200 balance on or about May 15th, 2020, which she paid, I believe it was on the 16th of May, uh, at which time I gave her the title and the bill of sale, which was clearly marked as is. Exactly what was the agreement that you would reduce uh, because of the repairs? It was $300 that I reduced the price from $3,000 to $2,700. Okay, Ms. Larkin, what is your version of that story? According to you, okay, what was uh, your agreement with him? Uh, first of all, the mechanic that I took it to uh, was a mechanic that I, I used for my American car. And when we got there, he said he didn't know anything about taking care of a Mercedes. He, you know, he could 
Well, why'd take you take it to him? Why didn't you pick a mechanic that does know how to take care of Mercedes? <laughs> why would you take it to I the wrong know. mechanic? <laughs> the whole point. What do you mean you didn't know? This is like, you know, left foot in front of the right foot. If you're taking it to a mechanic to make sure you want to buy it, take it to a guy who knows what he's doing, right? You can't take it to my hairdresser. She's not going to be able to tell you if you should buy it. Anyway, so go ahead. Yeah. So, well, uh, that turned out to be uh, an issue. But uh, he so he did not say any of the things that the defendant said he drove it about two blocks and so he never got it up to speed he didn't know there was any shimmy he had no idea uh anything about the back window there was uh, nothing about that so uh what the um outcome with him was basically uh you know it, it looks like it's running okay and it looks like there's no oil leaks or rust i had driven it up there and noticed that when we got up to speed uh, like 45 or so, it pulled to the right a little bit, and there was a shimmy. And a lot of times that Ms. can Larkin, be... Ms. Larkin, Ms. Larkin, Ms. Larkin, you notice whatever you notice, and then you negotiate the price. And what agreement do you guys come to? Uh, he agreed. Uh, he said there was a place down the street on US-1 that had uh, alignments available for $45 on Wednesdays if you made an appointment. <laughs> so um, we were starting kind of low because uh, the part that he showed me on eBay was not actually the correct part. He was sending me pictures of a, a different Ms. Larkin, part. Ms. Larkin, why don't you just work your way out of the paper bag yourself? Why don't you take the car to a real mechanic who knows Mercedes, who tells you it's going to cost you X, and then you decide, I don't want to buy the car. The car is not right, only yeah. old enough to vote, the car is old enough to drink. OK, it's a collector's <laughs> item. I know. OK, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just you like everything seems to be somebody else's problem when it's really yours. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff bought a car from the defendant, a Mercedes, says it needed fifteen hundred dollars in repairs and also says that the defendant promised to pay it. But the defendant says no way. He never agreed to anything like that. Let's go back into the courtroom. How is it a Mr. Grutman problem? Because in the end, what happens is you get a deduction, you negotiate the deduction, and it ends up costing you a lot more than that. And now you want him to pay a thousand something dollars so that he ends up selling you his Mercedes instead of for three thousand or two thousand seven. He ends up selling it for a thousand something when the blue book value is thirty four hundred. So you're going to have to prove that if you want me to believe that the agreement between you guys was not, as he says, let's reduce it by 300. Uh, that's my concession to you. If you want me to believe that it's what your complaint says, which is, let's go over that, it's 300 now and we'll adjust it later when I get the final bill. I know that's what you asked in an email. I know you said that in an email twice. I'm going to have to see where he agrees to that. Because every response I see to your emails is him saying, here's a picture, here's what it costs, let's assume another X for labor, here's what I'll do. And then you buy the car and you hand him the check. And then your paperwork with him doesn't say anything about, oh, but I reserve the right to pay half because I got a window. Your paperwork says as is. The paperwork doesn't, as first of all, doesn't say as is, and we never agreed to. Does as it say is. it's warranty? Can... Just a second. Does it say there's a warranty? No, no. Okay. There's then no warranty. It's, then it, the default position on any sale of a used car, if there's not a warranty, is that it is as is. But go ahead. Right, but unless you have freedom to actually uh, agree with the person that you're dealing with to make Absolutely. a separate. Absolutely. And now watch this. Yeah. Did you agree that you'd pay whatever it is that the mechanic charges, that the mechanics she eventually took it to, who did a bunch of, did you agree to pay for that work, sir? No. No, I, I okay. didn't even know about it. And that's why we're here, and because you say he afterwards. did, and you're right. The parties have the freedom to, to agree and contract to whatever in the world can happen, including that he pays you to take the car. It's a free country. The parties can agree to it. You, however, my dear woman, are going to have to prove it because he says that's not what happened. Do you have any evidence to support your position? You wrote a great complaint. Are you a former lawyer? Do you have a lawyer help you? What was the deal with that? Yeah, I'm an attorney. <laughs> but, but come on. I mean, you're an attorney, so I expect you to know that even more than was it. You got to show me proof that the guy agreed to that. He denies it. And you're, you're stone cold dead on the emails. So my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Good luck. Thank you, Your Honor.
So the uh, the defendant prevails. Ms. Larkin, you're the plaintiff. You're a lawyer, and you lost. What are you thinking? <laughs> Well, it's unfortunate, uh, certainly. Um, I, I didn't get to discuss the other emails that showed uh, his agreeing to uh, and my attempts to get him to go to another mechanic. Uh, there's quite a bit here that is right. I guess I didn't get to produce. I don't well, get it. we can't relitigate the case now. The judge has made her decision. You're just going to have to live with it. So I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Gutman, how, how do you feel about the outcome of the case? Let me ask you. I agreed on a price that she agreed on a price of 2700 I was trying to be neighborly. I gave her an additional $250. She cashed the check. And then a couple of days later, she tried suing me in court on civil theft and fraud for three times the damages. And, well, things are now settled. I'm sure that kind of shocked you when you got that. <laughs> No question about uh, that. That's an understatement. I'm <laughs> sure. Well, congratulations, sir. You have won the case. Thank Good you. for you. Thank you very kindly. All right. Let's. You. You're welcome. Let's join the judges now for another session of After the Verdict. That's kind of interesting, I got to tell you, because he, I saw that he had offered to pay her 250 because he was being neighborly. I didn't right. realize she cashed the check right. and then ran out and filed the lawsuit, which is right. kind of, it's. Right. It, it feels abusive because the whole idea behind that payment is that you're settling things. Right. And, and, that's and, outrageous. Wow. That's uh, not quite neighborly. That'll show him to pay an additional $250 to his neighbor. Wow. Right. Well, you know, this, in this instance, you have somebody buying a 23-year-old car. Right. And, and look, I love used cars. I'm a used car guy. You know I buy used cars. I sell them sometimes. And I didn't buy a new car until I was almost 30 years old after we were married. And uh, you can get into trouble with some of them. And they can, they can cost you a lot of money. So caveat emptor, buyer, beware, right? Terrence B. from Albany says, I remember when Jerry Scheinland was the judge in the People's Court. Was Judge Judy okay with that? <laughs> yes, she was. Uh, they have a great relationship. And um, she, was, she was really um, supporting him um, to this day. Um, it is such an interesting relationship because when you get two lawyers in the same house, there's a lot of arguing. But in that case, there's a lot of love. That'll do it for this case. Litigants are inside the courtroom for another case.